So in this video it will be about this freight car that I designed several years ago. And I decided that it desperately needs an overhaul. Because back then when I designed it, I didn't know a lot of stuff. And over the years I have learned and it's time to apply some of those lessons. This freight car can be 3D printed and back in the day I did actually have a functioning prototype. But now I look at this model, especially some of the details and I'm thinking, what in the world did I even do there? So today I'm going to completely overhaul this freight car. And now you might wonder, this looks perfectly fine, what could be possibly wrong about it? Well, let me just show you one thing. This here. It shouldn't be like that. And these and other issues are the stuff that needs to be fixed. And then there are a lot of details. Take these buffers here for example. On the first glance they look okay. But if you look at photos of the original, especially here, you can clearly see that I got it completely wrong. Another example would be this mechanism here. Again, if we look at the original, this looks a little bit different. And I'm confident that I can do it more justice than that. Or just look at all of this here. And if you look at the original, looks a little bit more detailed. And overall, I want to make it easier to print. So this is what I came up with. Now let's go over what's actually new and what did I change. Let's start with this detail here on the side, the so-called Zettelkasten in German. It's a little bit more detailed now. It's not so clunky as the old one. Now let's move on to this section. This pole here is now detached from the wall because in the old version I just attached it to the, to the wall and now it's freestanding and and it also doesn't intersect with this beam anymore. There's actually a hole in it and this is a perfect use case for 3D printing. It's actually very easy to print that as one part. I also mentioned that I wanted to make it easier to print so I detached all of those details here. Let's start with the buffers. Why is that important? Well if you want to orient the model ideally you would have to place support tips here on those screws. And that would really mess up the detail and yeah, you also have this detail here and it would be very prone to breaking. And the less supports you have to remove, the better. So those are now separate parts. Then these handrails as well, because they are very thin and it's way easier to print them as separate parts because you can could just place the support tips here, like here, and here, or here, and here. And you wouldn't have to worry about any supports that are here on this thin part. So let's hide those. And the last part I separated is this, well, I guess, step here. And I also made it way more detailed. And now you might think, well, you might have overdone it. But this is actually very easy to print. If you orient it correctly, you only have to place one support tip, like here. You would have to be a little bit careful when you remove it, but the detail comes out nicely. So with that out of the way, what I also did, I worked on this mechanism here. It's now way more detailed, maybe a little bit too detailed, but yeah, I just felt like doing it. And now to the floor. I didn't really change that much, way less than I planned. 
the only thing I really edited was this step here and yeah a few minor details here and there and yeah that's about it and now it's time for a test print and the result looked pretty good it was relatively easy to remove all of those support structures even on all of these small details and the end result looked really great I'm really happy with that so I can assure you that this part can be 3D printed without big problems. Now of course you still have to do some finishing work and some sanding to remove all of the sub small support tips. But you will always be stuck with that. And now a short test if the floor actually fits to the wagon and if the NEM coupler pocket fits and runs smoothly and if the springs can be attached without big problems. And now after those floor sections are primed in black it's time to insert the wheel sets and make sure that they run as smooth as possible. You might need some force to insert them and that's why it's important to use some, some flexible resin when you print those parts, otherwise a lot of stuff would break off. Now it's time for a test drive. I put some weights on the wagon and have a locomotive push it and yeah, make it do a few laps. When you first attach the wheels to the wagon, they won't spin very good. So this is the method I use to make them spin. Just do a few laps, put a lot of weight on it and do a lot of laps. And yeah, then eventually the wheels will spin. There might be more effective ways of doing it, but I'm always glad for an excuse to play around a little bit. And to speed up the process, I loaded up a lot of more weight on this wagon. Now a short test if the wheels do spin a little bit better. And yeah, that looks okay, at least way better than before. And one final test on my layout and this looks great. And another one. Yeah, it's a little bit... Well, it's okay. I did have some issues with the NEM coupler pockets, as you can see here. So that was the point where I really had to go back to the drawing board and redesign them. It worked somewhat okay on this locomotive and on this wagon it works pretty good. Um, but here, well, we are not getting anywhere with this so yeah and this this was really bad and another try still not that much better Okay, that worked pretty well, and so did this. And after redesigning the coupler pockets, it's time to put them into action and test them a little bit.
and only after all of these tests it's time to apply some color to the car bodies. I want to achieve two different color schemes and yeah this would be for the first one. I'm not going to explain in detail what I do here but in the end you will see the result. And this would be the other color scheme. Yeah, and I skipped over the weathering process, which I actually tried for the first time. And this is the end result for one of the cars. And this would be the other one. I think it turned out pretty well given the fact that I've never really done weathering on railcars before. And here I have completely assembled two wagons and now I'm going to test them extensively. Especially I want to see if the NEM coupler pockets really work or if I have to go back to the drawing board. And yeah, we do have one derailment already. But this is something that you will have to go through. You will have to test your rail cars extensively after printing. And eventually they are going to work. So time for the maiden voyage of those two wagons. And if anything would go wrong, it's going to be here, but it works out well. And then we have this section here. And crap. Well, this is going to happen a lot during testing. If you want to assemble those parts and you have difficulties, just heat up the car body with a with a hairdryer that's absolutely sufficient and then take the floor and gently push it in if it doesn't really want to slide in like here just use the hairdryer for a short period of time and then try again and then usually it should work. I strongly recommend only adding all of the details after you have extensively tested the wagons because they those, all of those details they really tend to break off so you don't really want to have that. And this is the end result that I came up with. Now all the details are added as well. And I'm happy with them. Of course there's always some room for improvement. But that would be another project. Finally time to test them all out. And that's it for this video. If you want to get the STL files, there's a link down in the description.